Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us on ABC 10 Plus. I'm Chris Thomas. We're interrupting this programming for a weather impact alert tonight. You may have noticed the northern lights are now visible here in Northern California, and it's all because of a solar storm. I want to show you some of the pictures that are coming in as we speak. Look at this. This is the view of the northern lights in Placerville. Yeah, this is actually near the airport, and we do want to say thank you to Amy Briggs for sending in these beautiful pictures. I also have a view in Davis Creek, California tonight. It's a remote area in Modoc County, right near the Oregon California border. But you see those beautiful hues of pink and yellows there in the night sky. And then we also have Round Mountain, also in Modoc County. Now keep in mind, this solar storm is really just getting started. So let's get right over to Chief Meteorologist Monica Woods tracking more on these conditions. Well, thanks, Chris. Yeah, we almost didn't see it earlier today because of the cloud cover that's starting to thin out. So thankfully, we did start to see the clearing skies just in time for some of the peak viewing opportunity. As far as the Aurora forecast, you can see we're going to continue to see the clear skies heading into this evening. Now we have another opportunity for tomorrow, but I'm going to go over why tonight is kind of the night to see it. As you can see with kind of a four panel look, even in El Dorado County, this is a, a camera that's kind of spinning around a little bit, but every now and then we get a little hint of some pink out there. So this is pretty low in latitude for us to get this. Here's a look at the Aurora viewing. Now we've been talking about this for about the past 24 hours when the Space Weather Prediction Center indicated that, hey, we looks like we're going to be getting one of those G4 storms today. They put out that warning with the best viewing. This is Modoc County right there in the co corner. That's why we can see it with the naked eye. Now some of you may be taking some photos. We have one coming in from our photographer where we have a long exposure camera and that's kind of in this area right here just to the south of that red line and north of that green line. So there's Sacramento and some of the surrounding areas are able to get some of those long exposure camera views. The reason why it's so difficult, at least in Sacramento and then areas that have a lot of population is the light pollution. So you can see once you get out of this general area, this is Sacramento right here. You have to travel a little bit farther to the north or certainly up into the Sierra. That's where we get some better views. You just get away from all of that pollution and then you have the better views. Now in terms of the Aurora forecast, this is the latest from the Space Weather Prediction Center. The big red swath is what I was showing you there. That's going to be optimal viewing. And then you kind of get into lesser viewing as we start to make our way south. But all of this moves its way down in latitude. So you get less and less with the naked eye that you can see it, but it's certainly out there to be seen. Now here's a look at the planetary K index. This is basically what the Space Weather Prediction Center is looking at. It's what's driving the aurora, kind of the magnetic field. And it's all the way up into an eight, eight and a half category, making it a G4 storm. Now we had that G5 storm last May. That's when a lot of people or kind of awakened to the fact that northern lights exist. This part of the world, we don't necessarily see them all the time, especially this low in latitude. You can see it's starting to come down just ever so slightly. That's basically what we were expecting here over the next 12 hours or so. And that, in fact, is why tomorrow night may not be as dynamic. But again, this is a G4 geomagnetic storm. So we've got power voltage control problems, potentially satellite tracking problems. I will say that uh, it's called SWIPSI. That's the nickname for Space Weather Prediction Center. They are in close contact with folks that are in Florida because with a lot of the power out as well as a lot of cell phone services, they are using satellite phones or even some of the radio transmissions and this could play an impact. But Aurora viewing is pretty much the bonus side of these G4 storms. Now, in terms of the forecast, what we're expecting, as I mentioned, when we get one of those K8, K9, it does tend to go down more in latitude here. A weaker one will be visible pretty much in the North Pole area and then even a K5 into parts of very extreme parts of the United States, parts of uh, Northern Europe as well tend to get in on that. That's why when we have one of these storms, it's really a prime opportunity to take advantage of it. Now the prime viewing is tonight. If you can get out away from the city lights, this is the time to do it. We'll still have was partly viewing tomorrow night, but it's going to be tougher 
in urban areas. So you want to get away from those city lights. Darkness is key, as we showed you with that light pollution. It's difficult to, be, to forecast, so you have to be patient. Tomorrow could be even weaker than tonight. But here's the deal. This has been an incredible solar cycle. The solar cycle runs in 11-year periods. We are in what is appearing to be nearing the peak, but even the Space Weather Prediction Center said it may be until 2026 before we see all of this activity quiet down. They also mentioned seeing two types of aurora and uh, kind of G4 storm, G5 storms in one year is extremely rare. So this has been a very active cycle. Here's a look at what they were forecasting for this year, kind of in this gray shade. And this is what we got. Look at the peaks that we've seen with all of those flares coming off the sun. Now, this particular aurora that we're having tonight into tomorrow came from an X-class flare. It was in the center of the sun. It was emitted on Tuesday, traveling 2.5 million miles per hour towards Earth. But they didn't know how soon that solar wind would actually reach us until, I know this is a lot of numbers, it reached two satellites, ACE and Discovery, that are one million miles away from Earth. Once it hit that, they could better predict how long that solar wind was going to take to actually reach us and what it was going to do. This is kind of what I'm talking about here. You can see the center dot right here. That's the sun, and these are some of the modeling that they were looking at as that solar wind started to radiate out towards Earth, which is in the green dot right there and then right there. Once they could see kind of the modeling prediction of how long it was going to take from the sun to Earth, then they could start saying, okay, when is the time frame that we might have the satellite disruption or radio frequency issues? Because that was, again, really important with Milton that just hit Florida. And it pretty much was on target. They did a really good job with the modeling. There's so many out there, and they picked this particular one. And uh, that wind actually reached us at 8 o'clock this morning. But it takes a while for everything to unfold. So let's kind of unpack this for a moment. How do auroras form? Well, I mentioned you get that X flare. So it's charged protons and electrons that are being emitted from the sun. Now, the Earth actually has its own magnetic field. So once that starts to move towards Earth, if it makes a connection with an opposite polarity, think about a magnet on your refrigerator. If it's a negative to negative, it's not going to stick that well. But if it's a negative to positive, boom, you get that. It's the same thing as lightning, actually, too, as clouds move across the Earth's surface. Once you get that difference in, uh, in the uh, magnetic field, you actually get a pretty strong connection. So it enters the Earth's atmosphere where the field is weakest at the poles. That's why we tend to get the most vibrant action at the poles. Once it does that, then you've got the collision and all of these colors that are present in the atmosphere. So that's a lot of science there, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> we'll toss it back to you for right now. Okay, oh, you know, we love the science of it, but we also love to see your photos as well. And so if you have photos, send them our way. You can submit your photos on the ABC 10 app. Just look for the Near Me section at the bottom of the homepage. And we do have even more photos coming in. Check this one out, okay? So you notice how vibrant this photo is? It's from ABC 10 photojournalist Kurt Wolf. He is in Yuba City tonight, and that's where he captured this photo. He's capturing the northern lights, helping us understand the best way to actually see them. So here's what you need to know. If you're trying to capture photos just like this, you'll need to set a longer exposure time on your phone. So this exposure, we're told, was set for about 20 seconds or so on the night vision setting on the camera. Now, here is a photo from Clarksburg tonight with another long exposure photo. You can start to see uh, just that hue of pink there in the sky. And, I, you know, as we start to talk about these photos that have been coming in throughout the evening, so many of you have been sharing the photos on Facebook, online, sending them in to our app as well. One of the things that I wanted to bring Monica back in to talk about was, to be clear, 
these storms are actually measured. And this is just one step away, Monica, from being what the most severe solar storm possible. And that kind of can strike a person, right? That, that absolutely, especially when it starts to disrupt a lot of the radio communication and navigation like GPS. You know, a really strong X-class flare that reaches the Earth with, it, with its entirety and kind of the full force can have big implications for all of the technology that we use. So that's why the Space Weather Prediction Center really keeps a close eye on those X-class flares. Again, the solar cycle being so active as it has been, it has been a bit of a concern. Uh, in their press conference yesterday, this, they said it is very rare to get two types of geomagnetic storms of this magnitude in a single year. But that just speaks to how strong this uh, solar cycle is right now. And again, we're gonna go through even next year with the potential of this type of activity and possibly, they said, into the beginning of 2026, Chris. Monica, you read my mind there because as you have that graphic up, uh -huh. I was wondering, I was reading, they were saying that, you know, we haven't really noticed these as much, you know, in the past, but you may actually start to see this happening more and more into the future, right? Right, so this is just kind of, they said it was been very surprising that this was their prediction right here and how far it exceeded that with so much activity coming off of the sun. Uh, especially when they said, and, and I'm not a space expert, but they said it was a particular concern because it came from the center of the sun. And that was a really important point that they wanted to drill home. When it came from the center of the sun, they were very interested to see, and this is, I'll go back to this graphic again, they were very interested to see how much of that solar wind actually stayed in place and then reached us and how long it would take. Again, traveling, can you believe that? 2.5 million miles per hour mm -hmm. that uh, left the sun, center of the sun on Tuesday and reached us at about eight o'clock this morning. So Monica, can we talk a little bit about timing here? Because mm -hmm. I know you were mentioning that this can pose threats to satellites, the GPS signals, and even the power grid. I mean, these are absolutely beautiful images, but then when you understand that this is a uh, an actual solar storm, uh, talk about the time frame uh, that those entities could be at risk. Well, right now we're looking at uh, through Friday, but again, and I'll step off here. I'm going to just put up this graphic again to show you this is what oh, I had it all, all lined up here. So uh, the Space Weather Prediction Center, this is what they measure for determining how strong these solar storms are going to be. It's called the uh, K index, and that's what's driving the aurora. So over the, oh, about the past 24 hours or so, you can see how it really started to ramp up. And what is hard is these are really difficult to predict because look at how quickly it went from basically a pretty low level and then within three hours it spiked into that G4 category. So that's not much lead time. And to get kind of the upper hand, just watching the sun, looking for those flares, any kind of, they're called CMEs, coronal mass ejections, and seeing where they form. And some the sun actually has more active areas than others. And when it comes from a very active area, and depending on the strength of that flare, then that's when the Prediction Center starts looking at that very seriously, to your point, mm -hmm. and determining whether that is going to cause satellite disruption, uh, GPS, radio, um, I mean, you just name it. So many things that we rely on here. Okay, so you're saying the timing may be at least through tomorrow. Uh, uh, by the weekend, you think this will have passed any threats, that is. Yeah, and I was looking at the forecast, and it did look like this was going to be the peak uh, right about here, or just about in the past hour or so, and now it's starting to come down. Now, that's not to say that we won't see a little bump once again, but uh, the, oh, the other thing when I was listening to the press conference is that they said that May one that was so dynamic and had just a longer duration is because there were a series of flares that came out of the sun. So that kind of um, propagated a little bit longer period for those auroras and it added to the strength as well. This is a single flare that came out. So they very much expected the time frame to be much shorter with the peak being today. Okay, that is good perspective, Monica. And again, remember, if you have any photos, we would love to see them. You can submit your photos 
on the ABC 10 app. All you have to do is just look for the Near Me section at the bottom of the home page. And we've been sharing photos and videos that have been coming in throughout the evening. This is the view of the Northern Lights in Placerville. It's near the airport, we're told. And again, I do want to say thank you to Amy Briggs for taking the time to snap these photos and to send them uh, into the newsroom uh, so that we can see the very vibrant photos. And if you notice, as Monica was mentioning, you do want to kind of get away from the light pollution. You do want a, a kind of dark area so that you can kind of really appreciate what we're seeing here on the screen. Now, I understand we have uh, more photos or videos to show. Uh, there's a view in Davis Creek, California that I want to show you. Uh, this is actually a live picture. So how cool is that, right? So you're actually getting to see how things look even as we speak. It's a remote area in Modoc County, right near the Oregon California border. I think we have even one more live picture, and this is in Round Mountain, also in Modoc County. Now, uh, this is a solar storm. Again, just getting started. Monica is saying that we could be uh, dealing with this through at least tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Don't think that we'll have much of it uh, into the weekend. And so this is really your prime opportunity. If you want to get out, uh, and get snap a photo yourself, you can do it. I want to show you that photo that our photojournalist Kurt Wolf snapped because I think this one has to be one of the more dynamic ones that we have seen all evening. Uh, this is from our ABC 10 photojournalist Kurt Wolf in Yuba City tonight. Uh, he has just been out, uh, you know, kind of trying his hand at it because just from the naked eye, it can be hard to see. Uh, so he was helping us understand, well, what is the best way to capture one of these photos? And he says, if you're trying to do it, you'll need to set a longer exposure time on your phone. And this one, for example, was set at about 20 seconds or so. And then I understand that we do have a photo from Clarksburg tonight. This is another kind of long exposure photo that we've been talking about so that uh, if you want to actually be able to see those lights, uh, you can get an idea of what to expect. But Monica, this is something else, right? I mean, you were saying that, you know, we saw it once earlier this year and now for a second time to be treated uh, to this light show. That's pretty spectacular. Yes, and if you're like me and you have no idea what long exposure means, Means. You can go to our abc10.com website and we actually have an article up there to show you how to in fact do it. But when Amy sent this in, I was like, this was what it's all about. You know, a little kid just looking out, not realizing that for many people, this is a bucket list item to go and see. So to just take the family and just do what you can to get out there and see this for some folks, once in a lifetime opportunity, but in Placerville and when we got that picture from Clarksburg, that's really low in latitude and it has a lot of light pollution as well. So it's beautiful outside right now. Satellite and radar showing that we have the clearing skies. Chris, you were mentioning tomorrow night. The only deal with tomorrow night's forecast is we are going to draw in a bit more cloud cover. So that is going to dampen perhaps the views best seen in the northern part of the state. And that's why tonight is perhaps the best night to be viewing that a little bit chilly outside. Kind of a beautiful picture as we view across the four corner area, even for uh, El Dorado County. This was just around El Dorado and periodically we'll see that camera spin around and get a really pretty picture uh, as far as the best viewing. It is right through northeastern California, and that's just because of where the aurora is, the strength of it. But with that long exposure, as you mentioned, you can get it a little farther to the south. But that May one compared to this one, the May one was a little bit stronger, and it came with multiple flares coming off the sun, Chris. Well, Monica, who said we'd never bring folks any good news <laughs> at the news, yeah. huh, right? It's an opportunity to run outside, to snap maybe some really cool photos, and to have some memorable moments with the entire family. And the timing is pretty perfect, too, huh? We do thank you so very much for joining us for this ABC 10 weather impact alert on the Northern Lights. Now, ABC 10 is here 24 seven on the free ABC 10 plus app. You can get your news and weather anytime, anywhere. Now, that home insurance special that you were watching starts again at 1030. Thanks so much for watching again. I'm Chris Thomas.